said that they converted to a Swatsa religion. Swatsa means nigger. Mm. So what Hitler did, he had a scientist called Himmler. He, him and Himmler, they traveled throughout all of Europe and they showed slideshows of the ancient Hebrew Israelites and showed ancient carvings of Israelites and said that these are Negroids. Mm. So why? Us, all of a sudden, when all of our forefathers, all of our Afrocentric scholars told us that the Hebrews were black, we're saying now it's Western philosophy. Somebody's stuck in the age of denial. Mm -hmm. And somebody's caught in a lie. Yes? It's like uh, Hitler said that he killed no sluts. Mm -hmm. That means black. Yeah. He didn't kill any. Yeah. Yeah. These people out there, they call themselves Jews. You know? Yes, they went there. And then another thing, he wanted them to help him uh, uh, finish the war, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, they didn't want to do that, so he decided to burn them up. Yeah. And that's the thing, because because no matter whether, whether you were a, 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 a physical Hebrew or you was a Hebrew convert, you prosper wherever you were. And just like the, uh, the philosophers, the philosophers were forced out of uh, Ethiopia because they were prosperous. And same thing with the Jews, when they converted, when King Bulan, and this is what happened, there's a, there's a Khazarian Empire, when King Bulan, in uh, of 740 uh, BC, he had an option to convert to three, uh, um, three religions. The ones he picked was Judaism. And he converted the entire nation, and that's how you got the Khazarian. That's how you got the Khazarian Empire, and that's how you get European Jews. I want to touch on something. Okay, here goes another thing for Jer by Gerald Massey. It says the which we touched on the biblical Asham is also the word used for the environs of Jerusalem and for Jerusalem after their dispersion in 70 A.D. The Asham tribe or Ashanti of Ghana derived their name from this, since they were part of a tribe of Hebrews that ran from the, destru the destruction. The Hab Ashan is the ancient name of what is now called Ethiopia Abyssinian. Or Abyssinian. So these are one of the things that we have to realize as brothers. That when you look at the when you looking at the Ethiopians or you're looking at the Kushites, they derive and most of them came down through Middle according to the Kepra Nagas, which is the Ethiopian Bible. So when we come with that intellect or that thought that we are of a Western philosophy, it's fraudulent. You can't have it both ways. You can't say, oh, the Bible is Western, but it's all Kemet. The Bible is Western, but it's all Sumer. We can't do that. You have to pick and choose what you want. Right? Let's continue. All right, Egyptology today, and like I said, in the scriptures it tells us not to hate Egypt, and the Bible says we cannot hate Egypt because Egypt what? Took us in. We had an alliance. We had an alliance with Egypt. So our Torah tells us you can't hate somebody who helped you. So this discussion is not against Egypt, it's against modern day Egyptologists. And what I say about modern day Egyptologists is what we do is we put together two things. We add science with religion and we come together with a modern day Egyptologist or Egyptologist today, which is coming from European doctrines. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> but the question is, when we go to this book, The Wonderful Ethiopians of Ancient Kushite Empire, it shows you the reason why the Europeans are pushing Egypt. The Europeans are pushing Egypt. Now, I was watching Bubble Guppies the other day. And Bubble Guppies came on, and guess what they teach you? Egypt. But one thing they don't teach you is that the father of Egypt is Kush. As far as the developmental process. The reason why they don't teach you this is because they're trying to push away the connection of blackness. Well, you say, well, how can they do that? When you look on the walls of Egypt and you see the pharaohs look black. If you look at the pharaohs, they don't look black. They, because they went through a time of white washing. They went in the pyramids, they take it, they get their little things. All right, they look a little lighter. we come back next week. And eventually, the pharaohs are not going to look nothing like us. They shot the nose off. They, they shot the, the um, yeah, Napoleon shot the nose off. So when we look in here, 
And there's a few things that she speaks on, and I want us to I want to touch on it, and I'm gonna read it. The sister name is Drus Drusilla Houston. And I, huh? I'm giving her a whole name. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, Dungey Houston. A beautiful sister. I picked up the book, um, and, and, and I was I was I was engulfed in the book. You know, and I was studying the book. It says in the book, it says, the excavations of Petrie revealed that in Egypt, there was a race that preceded the ancient Egyptians. And they were the pioneers of the race of Asia Minor. Now, this is supported by Genesis 10, the 10th chapter, the 7th verse. And I'm going to show you why the Europeans give you the Bible on one hand, but destroy it on the other hand. Hey, introduce yourself, brother. We got my brother Maasi Allen, and your name, my lord? Hotel is brother, uh, brother Hunter right here, man. All right, come Peace, brother. He's selling the fish, and he ain't appreciating you trying to. Uh, yeah, my name's brother Hunter, and I, you know, I'm, I'm appreciating this, man, and what you're saying, you're right with Zach so far, bro. All right, peace, brother. All right, Genesis 10, 7. <laughs> and sons of Cush... And Sheba, and Havilah, and Sapta, and Rama, and Septica, and sons of Rama, and Sheba, and Dedan. And Cush begat Nimrod, and he began to be a mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore it is said, even Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Arek, Akar, Kana, and the land of Shinar. Now in the Bible we said Shinar is what? Sumer. Right? Now if the scriptures is telling you, the beginning of building bricks and civilization started with what? The Kushites. Kushites. Now, you got many Hebrews, and I say this, and I said this earlier, and I want you to understand. Hebrew Israelites on a large scale is uneducated. <laughs> and the reason why I say this is because they don't understand the doctrines they're teaching. And that's one of the things that always echoed to me with Malachi Zio. Malachi Zio said this, he said, I don't attack the Bible. He said, I attacked the way you would talk the scriptures. And it always resonated to me, like, what is he talking about? But as I became educated, I understood more. Because now you got people that's looking around for Nimrod. Where's Nimrod? Where's Nimrod? Nimrod is a science. Nimrod is a group of people. Nimrod is Orion. Those who follow what? Orion. A group of people that came and followed Orion. When you look at... When you look at the ancient Kush civilization, what they did is they hunted lions. All in Mesopotamia, they hunted lions because guess what Orion does? You see the picture of Orion, he has a lion in one hand, he's the mighty killer. You remember Ashibanipal? Ashibanipal is the one who gathered all the, the clay tablets that we have discovered over there in the, in the Middle East. And I, I say the Middle East, but I'm going to tell you that's not the Middle East. That's ancient black civilization. And... He found it and he discovered it, and in it he started hunting lions. Why? Because he was mimicking the ancient Kushites that established their, their kingdom. So when our people are looking for Nimrod, Nimrod is a group of people. It's a civilization. That's why when we go into Egypt, that we go to see the pyramids in their line, in their alignment. Right? So now, she goes on and she says, Ethnologists announces their origin but refuse to change their antiquated theories. They hide what lies behind Egypt. What lies behind Egypt? The Kushite Empire. It goes on to say that the ancient Hebrews called Ethiopia the Torrid Zone, right? Which is a fertile area. The Greeks said the Ethiopians were, they, they ruled the Genghis and the Tigris, and the Israelites taught that the Ethiopians ruled three continents at one time. Now this is not the Jews though, right? This is our people. Because European Jews ain't going to teach you that. They're going to tell you that Kushites is a curse. They call you Cushy. Mm -hmm. They say you're Cushy like that's a curse. But we don't look at it like a curse. We look at it as a blessing. When the Creator say, you like Cush unto me, O Israel, we say thank you. We say I appreciate you, huh? And they look at it like it's hideous. Let's go to Genesis.
the third chapter. No, the Genesis, the second chapter. The tenth verse. Can I get somebody read for me, please? Uh, Genesis 2, verse 10. And the river issued forth from Eden to one of the garden. And from there it is divided and became four headwaters. headwaters. The name of the first is Pishon, mm -hmm. the one that encircled the whole land of Havilah, mm -hmm. where the goal is. Mm -hmm. The goal of that land is good. The Bebedalak is there. Mm -hmm. And the Shishon stone. The name of the second river is Gion. One of the one that encircles the whole land of Cush. Alright, now let's stop there. Because Europeans want you to think that black civilization is a small place. But in the Bible it says the land of Cush is connected to what? The Euphrates and the Tigris. If you ever looked at ancient Cush in ancient Saudi Arabia, they have the same city names. So, if you look at the scriptures and we're talking about Garden of Eden connected to a river, the Tigris and Euphrates, and it's surrounding Cush, then where is Cush? It's in, it's, in, it's in what they call the Middle East and the East Coast of Africa. See, only the Europeans limit the Cushites to the East Coast of Africa. In the Hindu book called the Quranists, in the Quranists, it says that the Kushites are the father of these civilizations from the Indus Valley to Sumer and to Egypt. And in the Paranus, he calls these books Kush Dweeba, which are provinces of Kush. Right? And the reason why I bring that up, because anybody who knows one of the lessons I did was about a sheep, and in Genesis, this is also a physical place. But the Garden of Eden, when we talk, we talk about, when we're teaching about the, the, the serpent and Eve, we're talking about the reptilian part of your brain that is what? Dealing with materialism, desire, lust. We teach you that the serpent is one who brought DNA, who taught man how to procreate. We talk about the Garden of Eden, we're talking about the right hemisphere, the brain, and intuitiveness. This is what we're talking about now. So when I say that and I bring the science, that when we talk about the four rivers that were physical, we understand it, that under your PMI, that there's also cranial canals that also break into four streams and what? Nourish your brain. So the Garden of Eden has a physical representation, but yet it's also dealing with the what? The mind. So when I say that, I say that to make you realize and understand that when you're talking to us, or we're talking to you, don't couple us with everybody else. You understand? And that's what, that's why what probably this meeting for is for us to have the level of respect for one another because we do see the science. Now, the sisters say many other things in the book, but she says the problem with she says the problem with the world is because they didn't accept the Bible and they didn't, t understand, they didn't accept the Greeks when they told you that this is what Ethiopia was. This is one of the things she said. Now I don't even use the word Bible because I hate that word, it's ugly to me. Let's use Tanakh because you know Bible got a, a, a bad thing about it. You start talking about King James and you start high the boys on the butt. We're not getting into that, we're talking about the Tanakh. <laughs> We told my son that's greater. Now, let me ask you a question. Why do you think that they destroyed Sumer? Now, they didn't destroy Egypt. They took stuff from Egypt, but they left a lot of stuff in Egypt. And I'll show you that if it wasn't for the Bible, archaeologists wouldn't be in Egypt in the first place. Come on. Now, the Europeans after Alexander, they left it alone.